The Life and Sad Ending of Robert Duvall Robert Duvall was born Robert Selden Duvall on January 5, 1931, in San Diego, California, U.S., to William Howard Duvall and Mildred Virginia. While his father was a Virginia-born U.S. Navy admiral, his mother was an amateur actress. He received his formal education from Severn School. He graduated from the Principia in St. Louis, Missouri in 1953 and later enrolled at Principia College in Illinois. From 1955 to 1957, he studied at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of Theater in New York, where he was trained by Sanford Meissner. It was there that he befriended Dustin Hoffman and Gene Hackman. Besides receiving acting training, he also took up odd jobs to support himself. He worked as a clerk in the Manhattan Post Office, did clerical work at Macy's, and also took up a job as a truck driver. He started his professional acting career in the early 1950s. He played the role of a pilot in a stage show called Laughter in the Stars, an adaptation of The Little Prince. He was drafted to serve the United States Army for a year from 1953 to 1954. It was during his service in the military that he acted in an amateur production of the comedy Room Service. After his discharge from the military, he returned to the theater and was cast to play several roles in 1955. These roles included Eddie Davis in Ronald Alexander's Time Out for Ginger, Hal Carter in William Inge's Picnic, Charles Wilder in John Willard's The Cat and the Canary, Paris in Arthur Miller's The Crucible, and John the Witchboy in William Burney and Howard Richardson's Dark of the Moon. In the year 1956, this budding star was seen in a number of theater productions, such as Frederick Knott's Dial M for Murder, Inge's Bus Stop, and John Van Druten's I Am a Camera. His acting skills earned him much popularity and several other roles. The year 1957 witnessed him play the characters of Mr. Mayor in Agatha Christie's Witness for the Prosecution, Hector in Jean Annual H.S., Thieves Carnival, and Eddie Carbone in Arthur Miller's A View from the Bridge. Apart from appearing at the Gateway Theater, he also made appearances at Augusta Civic Theater, McLean Theater, and Virginia and the Arena Theater. After playing many characters, he became a leading theater actor. He made his off-Broadway debut in 1958, playing the character of Frank Gardner in George Bernard Shaw's Mrs. Warren's Profession. Some of his other off-Broadway works include Michael Shirtliff's Call Me By My Rightful Name and William Snyder's The Days and Nights of B.B. Finstermaker. The year 1959 saw him play a number of lead roles, such as Stanley Kowalski in Tennessee Williams, A Streetcar Named Desire, Maxwell Archer in Once More with Feeling, Igor Romanov in Peter Ustinov's Romanov and Juliet, and Joe Mancuso in Kyle Crichton's The Happiest Millionaire. In 1959, he made his television debut in Armstrong Circle Theater, appearing in an episode titled The Jailbreak. He then made regular guest appearances in several television shows, including Naked City, The Untouchables, Route 66, The Twilight Zone, The Outer Limits, The Fugitive. While his career graph was steadily rising, he made his big screen debut with the film To Kill a Mockingbird in 1962. Throughout the 1960s, he played minor and major supporting roles in several films. In 1966, he made his Broadway debut as Harry Rote Jr. in Frederick Knott's Wait Until Dark. Thereafter, he was seen playing the character of Walter Cole in David Mamet's American Buffalo. He soon became a popular figure in the Hollywood film industry. Though he had appeared in a number of films, his biggest breakthrough came with the 1972 film the Godfather, in which he played the character of Tom Hagen. He reprised his role as Hagen in the film's sequel in 1974. 
Two years later, he was seen playing a notable supporting role in the film, The Eagle Has Landed. In 1979, he delivered a Golden Globe award-winning performance in the film Apocalypse Now, playing the supporting character of Lieutenant Colonel. Some of his other films from the decade include Network, The Great Santini, and The Betsy. The 1980s turned out to be good for the actor as he earned an Academy Award for Best Actor for the film Tender Mercies. His other releases of the decade include The Natural and Colors. Additionally, he also appeared in the miniseries Lonesome Dove. During the 1990s, Robert appeared in as many as 21 films, sometimes starring in four films a year. While all his films did good business at the box office, two exceptionally successful ones are the Oscar Award-nominated film, The Apostle, and A Civil Action. In addition to appearing in films, he has also made numerous appearances on television, including the Golden Globe Award-winning portrayal of Joseph Stalin in Stalin. He also played Adolf Eichmann in The Man Who Captured Eichmann. In 2000, he appeared in three films, namely, Gone in 60 Seconds, The Sixth Day, and A Shot at Glory. He was then seen appearing in a number of movies, including Assassination Tango, Gods and Generals, Open Range, Four Christmases, Thank You for Smoking, and Get Low. In 2011, he played the role of Johnny Crawford in Seven Days in Utopia. The following year, he had two releases, namely, Jane Mansfield's Car, and Jack Reacher. In 2014, he became the oldest person to receive an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor for his performance in The Judge. In the following years, he appeared in movies like Wild Horses, In Dubious Battle, and Widows. For his exemplary acting skills, he has been nominated seven times for the prestigious Academy Awards, winning once for Tender Mercies. Furthermore, out of seven nominations at the Golden Globe, he won four times. He received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2003. In 2005, he was felicitated by President George W. Bush with the National Medal of Arts at the White House. In addition to this, he has also won a BAFTA, Screen Actors Guild Award, and Emmy Award. In his personal life, he gets married four times to Barbara Benjamin, Gail Youngs, and Sharon Brophy. Dole's fourth wife is a granddaughter of Argentine aviation pioneer Susanna Ferrari Billinghurst. He produced, directed, and acted with her in Assassination Tango, with the majority of filming in Buenos Aires. Duval is also known as a very skilled Argentine tango dancer having a tango studio in Argentina and in the United States. Besides his work commitment and a busy schedule, he works for the Robert Duvall Children's Fund, which he founded along with Pedraza. The organization aims at assisting families in northern Argentina through renovations of homes, schools, and medical facilities. Furthermore, he actively supports a non-profit charitable organization called Pro Mujer, which is dedicated to helping Latin America's poor women. He has been an avid supporter of historic preservation and has openly voiced his opinion against the building of a Walmart store to safeguard Wilderness Battlefield National Park. Thank you for listening to the story about the life of Robert Duvall. Like and comment on your opinion in the comments section below.